What's up, love muffins? It's your girl Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All Tea All Shade Power Season 2 finale. Okay, so I went to go see Straight Out of Compton tonight. We went to the 1015 show and let out at about almost 1 o'clock. So I went straight home from the theater, came home and watched the season finale of Power. So I'm in like system overload. I just got so many thoughts going through my head. If you have not gone to see Straight Outta Compton, please go see it this weekend. It is a phenomenal film. I give it 10s across the board, A++, 5 stars. But let's get straight into this Power Season 2 finale review. Straight out of Compton, a crazy motherfucking name, Ice Cube. I got on my Easy E shirt, by the way. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So the season finale starts off with Drifty on some old voodoo Erica Badu Rihanna Barbadian sh type shit. And he up there sprinkling bless oil and garlic and lemons and lime zest everywhere over knives and shit. And the next thing you see, he gets murked. He gets shot in the fucking head. And then the killer leaves a motherfucking tarot card or a spade on his back. <laughs> and the scene is over. The next thing we see is Angela, old paranoid, ignorant ass, at her apartment, packing a bag, getting ready to go somewhere. I just wish this bitch would fucking run away, leave the fucking country. Ooh, go to hell. Um, then they switch to her sitting down in a seat at the precinct at the at the her job or whatever, and she has her phone in her hand and. Jamie calls her and she sends him to voicemail. He leaves a voicemail message because he's a soft ass nigga. Don't no real nigga leave voicemail messages no more. So she's sitting there playing with her phone and shit. And she trying to figure out how she should put his name on her phone. First she takes it out as Jamie. She changes it to Ghost. Then she changes it to he would who not be named like he Voldemort or some shit. And I'm like, girl, you are doing so much. Like, I cannot stand that bitch. She's so fucking extra for no damn reason. Then, um, Mike comes out the office and he basically on some shit like, bitch, I ain't got time for you. I ain't got shit to say to you, bitch. Your career is about to be over. Be the fuck going. And she's like, wait a minute, Mike. There's something I should have told you weeks ago, but I want to tell you now. Can you just give me a minute? And he looking at her like, all right, I'll give you a minute because you're kind of cute. So come on into my office. So Ghost and Proctor meet outside up in the goddamn snow and shit. It's like 20 below. Why them niggas couldn't meet indoors? I don't know why. Maybe because they was on some illegal shit. So he pays Proctor off for all the great work that he did getting Tommy out of jail. And he like, damn, nigga, you gave me a cashier's check. I like how the fuck you move. Good going. So Proctor tells him, like, nigga, I think that you just basically need to keep me on retainer because I think I can see in your foreseeable future that you will be needing me again. Because Tommy ass is going to get um rearrested and... Your girl is going to be coming after your ass again because of how the way you played her ass. So, you need to just keep me on the payroll. And Ghost is like, Angie won't do that. I know her. That's my bitch. I got this. I got all everything covered. I've considered all of my angles. I got this. Don't be waiting for that phone call because I'm that nigga. And I'm looking at him like, this is one cocky ass nigga. Like, oh my, like, you better pull this shit off, nigga. You better pull this shit off with how cocky your ass is. As always, Tasha is in the kitchen cooking up some grub. This bitch in the kitchen cooking up biscuits and eggs and bacon and grits. Cheese eggs and bullshit. And Tommy's in the kitchen with her and he's eating as always. You know that nigga likes to eat. And so Tommy assures her that Ghost is back on track. That he got their best interest in heart. And that um, the way he fucked Angela over ass was priceless. That goes to show that he's back on their team. And he was like, you know what? The relationship between Ghost and Angela is done. It's finito. It's finished, bitch. And so she over there stirring the grits and shit. And she looking like, hmm. Well, maybe... Me and this nigga might have a chance for getting back together. Hmm, we shall see. And I'm like, girl, don't hold your breath because that's a fuck nigga over there. Girl, fuck him. But you can also tell on her face that she's worried. So she tells Tommy to go check on the kids and get them up so they can come on and eat breakfast before school starts. So when he leaves, she picks up her phone and she calls Sean. And she's like, Sean, where are you? I've been calling you all day. Call me back, please. So Kaden, old paranoid ass. 
<laughs> it's Ohio motherfucking alert. This nigga sitting at the soul food restaurant looking out the window with his gun just sitting right there by his side. He ready to shoot a motherfucker at any motherfucking moment. He is down for the cause. He is ready because he knows that everybody is on his damn back because he did not come through with the goddamn me plan to kill ghosts. So, Big Tasha from Why Did I Get Married calls <laughs> and she like, Kanan. Uh, Sean didn't come home last night. I don't know where this nigga at. He ain't asking his phone. This ain't like my baby. Have you seen him? And he was like, nah, uh, I ain't seen him. Uh, last I heard, he was supposed to be doing uh, a gig with Ghost. So she's like, well, when you heard from him, tell him to call me because I am sick of watching this nigga's drugs. He needs to come make up this goddamn bed. I ain't his goddamn maid. And he like, alright, I'll tell him. So as he's in ending the phone call, Dre comes in to the front area and he like he he catches the end of the the conversation and Dre says you know yeah that's some cold shit K what you think she gonna do when she found out you you clip you killed him and so this crazy nigga jumps up out his seat and shoves this nigga up against the wall like he John Van Damme or some shit or whatever that nigga name was and he was like she ain't gonna find out shit if you did your job right and Dre like I did exactly what you told me to do and so Kanan let him go, and Dre looking at him like, nigga, that, that was a last, the first and the last time you're going to put your motherfucking hands on me. I got something for your ass. And so Kanan says, have you heard from anybody? And Dre was like, nah, because Ghost ain't dead, motherfucker. He was like, Ruiz called, but I ain't answer. And so Dre says, well, round the crew up, because Ghost know we ready, and we coming for him. So Dre mean mug this nigga like, Psh. Nigga, you tried it. Like, you tried it with me. You done messed up my good outfit, my good shirt and shit. You got life fucked up. And so, he's mean mugging this nigga. And Kayla look at him and say, What the fuck did you look like? Did I stutter, motherfucker? You better get your yellow ass up in the back and do what the fuck I told you to do. Tommy's at his loft, which I love. And he is playing with his little cute little dog. Even though I hate animals in real life. So, he's playing with his dog. Ghost looking at him like, nigga, we got business to talk about. Can you stop feeling with this damn ugly ass dog? And so, Ghost tells him, you know, I think Lobos is going to wonder how your ass got in jail and why his ass is still in jail. And so, Tommy says, you know, we need to let that motherfucker know that it was a federal fuck up. That I ain't snitch. I ain't say a motherfucking thing. And that we can still go. You know what I'm saying? We can still roll with this whole drug shit. So, Ghost says, you know what, I'm going to call him and I'm going to tell him to make sure to see if he's still down with us moving this way. So he tells Tommy to call up Serve and Wes and the rest of them niggas and get them all on board. Tommy like, all right. And so Ghost tells him, but you know what? Um, I need to tell you something. Sean tried to kill me the other night. And so Tommy looking like, what nigga? Like, huh? Where the fuck that come from? He was like, yeah, nigga. That nigga ran up on me last night, tried to kill me and shit. And then... Kanan ordered him to do it and that Kanan was the one that was behind all the hit. So Tommy don't believe him at first. He's like, nah, not Kay, not Kanan, man. He's like, look, that's why I want to tell your dumb ass in the first place. I knew your ass wasn't going to believe me because that nigga got your earned shit. But I'm telling you, this is the motherfucking truth. And so he was like, the nigga think that I got this nigga set up to go to jail. He's steady lying. Go steady lying. Won't tell this nigga the truth. That his ass ain't shit. And so... Tommy put two and two together. He was like, damn, that nigga did want me to bring him to the meeting with Lobos. Damn, that nigga is trying to fuck us over. Like, that's fucked up. And so, Ghost like, well, with Lobos in jail, Kanan has to find another connect unless he still trusts your ass. Oh, Greg. <laughs> oh, Greg. Oh, Greg. Goes to see Mike. He go into the office with his little good jc penny suit on and he goes to sit down and he looking around he was like you know what my bad i'm sorry i'm late um i'm late because i was looking for angela because we was close, supposed to be coming to talk to you together this morning but i can't find this bitch and so mike tells him well she already came to talk to me but you go on here and have a seat so he looking like okay this is odd what the, what the fuck is this bitch at and why the fuck is she talking to him without me so mike says to him when did angie first have contact with St. Patrick about the Eaton case. So before Mike, so before Greg can even answer the question, some nigga named Jerry <laughs> that looked like he on traffic duty comes in and stands up against the wall and Greg looking like, what the fuck this nigga doing to her? And so Mike assures him that, you know, I, I called him in here because 
I just want to get some clarification on a few things. So, Greg says, well, the night that they all interrogated Holly, he went to her apartment. And so, Mike was like, well, why did you go there? And he was like, because she seemed upset. And he wanted to see if she was okay. And that Ghost might have stole the sketch that night. He was like, after that, she went straight from the office to Truth. And so, Mike says, how do you know that? Did you follow her? So Mike sitting there for a second, he like, oh wait a minute, no, no the fuck, do this, do this nigga think I'm, do this nigga think I'm crazy? Do this nigga think that I'm goddamn me on some hand and rocks and cradle type shit? So he was like, look, bro, I know how this may seem, I know what it looked like, but I was trying to protect her. Mike was like, well, if, nigga, if you was trying to protect her, why the fuck you ain't calling for backup? Like, see, your ass is on some bullshit. No, you was stalking her ass. So I'm sitting there like this, ignorant. Down no skank devil bitch that made these people think that Greg, the sweet poor Hennessy Greg, is out here stalking her ass. I'm like, this bitch will do anything to save her ass. Like she don't give a fuck who she used. And y'all root for this bitch. Y'all want her and talk to her and ghost to be together. And at this point, I want them two motherfuckers to be together. Cause I can't stand neither one of their asses. So Greg is like, damn, like this bitch setting me the fuck up. Like, how did I not see this shit? And I'm like, Greg, how you ain't see it neither? Like, her and that damn snake ass pussy of hers, girl. Ooh. So Greg's steady trying to prove his innocence. He's like, I'm not stalking this bitch. Ghost is really, James St. Patrick is really ghost. I can prove it. He was like, Mike, well, how can you prove you got any evidence? He's like, no, nah, I ain't got no evidence, but I'm going to get some soon. He was like, look. Motherfucker. I ain't doing nothing but trying to discredit this man because you are a scorned lover and ain't nobody here from this shit. Angela was not aiding the beddings of uh, St. Patrick. She helped them find Lobos. And that Greg is basically just jealous because she moved the fuck on. Mike tells Greg that Angela has for filed a formal harassment complaint against his ass and that he's suspended effective immediately. And so Greg is sitting there like, what the entire fuck is happening? I'm like, this bitch cold. That's a cold-blooded bitch. I wouldn't want that bitch near my damn pinky toe or my dog, let alone a human being that she so-called love. Like, you was in a whole relationship with this nigga. Claimed you loved him, was fucking and sucking him every chance she got until Ghost came into the picture. And now you gonna frame this nigga? Like, you ain't shit, bitch. You ain't shit. You's a dirty dog. See Tommy walking down the street dressed like he Kanye West and shit. And so he texts Drifty and says, new number, same business, not knowing that Drifty is. <laughs> so he knock on the soul food spot door. He bam on the door like, hey, yo, let me in. So they let him in. They pull him in and shit. And they all, oh, it's just guns coming everywhere. <laughs> and he like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, what the fuck is going on? So Dre stepped to him, pat him down. He like, yo, my nigga, what the fuck is going on? I thought we was good. And Kanan come out the back. And I'm like, did the niggas still have on the same outfit? And so he like, what the fuck you doing with her? And Tommy say, damn, Kanan, did I miss something? And so Kanan says, I mean, I can't trust any nigga that gets sprung that fast. And so Tommy said, nah, I ain't no snitch, motherfucker. You got me fucked up. And so he goes on to tell Can Kanan that Ghost set him up and that... Ghost ain't shit. He can't trust that motherfucker. And then when he got out of jail, Kanan was the first motherfucker he went to go see. So, Kanan looking at him like, I mm, don't know if I can trust you. But, he believes him. And he was like, you know, the same thing that motherfucker did to me. That nigga set me up too. So, he tells Tommy about Ghost and Tasha setting him up. And Tommy was like, and Tasha too, like, oh, this bitch was in on it too. This nigga keep on trying to play it off to me like he ain't did shit. But now I'm starting to believe that them two motherfuckers really did set this nigga up. Like, y'all really did this shit. This nigga still lying to me. So, Tommy put his feelings to the side and he looks at Kane and he says, you know, I really need you to help me move this weight. I'm going to go to Lobos. I'm going to be running this shit. I got to get ghosts out the motherfucking picture. And so, Kane is all the way with it. And he was like, well, come on back to my office. Let's come up with a plan so we can get rid of this nigga and figure out how to, we can step to Lobos ourselves. 
So Ghost is heading out of his office, and when he goes to open the door, guess who's standing there? No other than Tasha. And this bitch is dressed like she is going to the club, and it is after 11. I'm like, where in the hell is this girl going in the middle of the day with this get up on? But it was a badass outfit. I just wish they'd get that wig game together. Her wig game was better season one than it is now. I don't know what the fuck is going on with them rough ass looking wigs. If they don't get Malibu doll face to do her wigs immediately, um, so. She says, you know, Tommy came over for breakfast this morning. He told me about what you did. He told me how you got rid of uh, Angela, how you played her. So, tell me, you know, is it over between you two? So, Ghost look at her and he says, is it over between you and Sean? And so this bitch says. And he was like, yeah, I know. He told me himself when he came last night to kill me. And so she looking like, what the fuck? He tried to do what? What you say? No, no, you ain't say that. You lying. You lying on him. He ain't do that. You lying, ghost. I know you mad, nigga, because I was smashing. But you lying. Talking about this nigga killed, tried to kill you. Get your life, ghost. And so ghost says, but you know the real reason he wanted me dead, right? I mean... I use Angela to protect our family, but you fucking that kid could have destroyed it. What would you and the kids do if he had to pull that trigger? And so Tasha says to him, what did you do to him? And he says, I told him to leave town. And so Tasha says, so you just going to let him walk away? And he was like, I don't blame him. I blame you and Kanan. I don't know if y'all felt the same way about that, but uh, that didn't touch my spirit right. I'm looking at the television screen like, nigga, you been out here fucking a whole bitch, ain't gave a damn about the shit that you have done to this woman. You have played this bitch out to the left, ain't gave a shit about this bitch feelings, but now you want to feel some type of way because she was fucking somebody? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Two wrongs don't make a right, I guess. Oh, all right. And then you got the nerve to try to blame... The, him pulling a gun out on her out on him on her where they do that at no nigga he pulled a gun out cause you ain't shit you's a trifling ass nigga like ghost character is really he's a fuck boy he is a fuck boy to the fullest like oh my god he is a grown ass fuck boy in a cashmere suit I cannot deal with this nigga Tasha grabs her coat she's getting ready to leave she got a whole attitude right about now and so ghost says oh and uh I'm sure you're here from Sean as soon as he gets set up but then you got a big decision to make either you gonna stay here with the kids or go live off the salary of a high school basketball coach trying to be funny cause you feel some type of way cause your little feelings hurt cause this bitch was out here getting her back banged out by a little 20 year old nigga that was driving you everywhere you go she hit your ass right in the motherfucking gut with that shit nigga that's what your fuck ass get your fuck nigga so she says fuck you ghost ain't no winners here it's just me and you baby both of us alone bloop bloop <laughs> and so she leave out she sashay away I'm like bitch no Shantae you stay so Serb and his old muscular ass body I love an athletic build on a man like whoo his body so he in the steam room and he got a ladle and splashing water on his ass and he was like he was calling one of his workers and shit and wouldn't nobody come so he gets the fuck up because he got an attitude because he wants to know why these niggas ain't running to his aid so he looks out the little peephole and he see all his men on the floor dead so he walks out the room he grabbed his cell phone. I don't know what the fuck he grabbed his cell phone for because he ain't trying to use it. Clue me in below if I'm missing something. So he walking around looking at all the dead bodies and shit. And next thing you know, pow, he shot in the motherfucking head. And then the lead, the killer steps over his body and leave another little playing card on his chest, a Uno card or some shit. <laughs> Saying pick one or whatever the fuck. So Tommy and Ghost at the Hudson River or whatever the fuck somewhere in New York and they talking and shit and Tommy tells Ghost that Kanan really believes that he and Tasha set him up and so Ghost is like this motherfucker crazy this is what jail do to your ass don't believe shit this nigga say and so Tommy says but you know the funny thing is he said you didn't kill that bitch down in Miami so Ghost looking like god damn it I ain't cover that lie so he was like yeah you are right I didn't kill that bitch um I lied sorry 
not sorry. <laughs> so, Tommy says him, I mean, this another time you lied to me in my motherfucking face. Like, goddamn motherfucker, why the fuck you keep on lying to me? I ain't never did nothing to make you not trust me. And Tommy, and Ghost says on some tit for tat shit, he was like, I mean, you just didn't tell me about Holly talking to the feds. Mm. Huh, girl? You ain't tell me about that. And so Tommy's like, well, you over, I, you right. You lied, I lied. But at this point, we need to be on a clean slate. Is there anything else that you need to tell me that you ain't told me yet? And Ghost is like, nigga, I ain't got to tell you shit else. There ain't nothing else I'm hiding. I got rid of Angela ass for you. I got your ass out of jail. And you know how much that bitch meant to me. Like, what more the fuck I got to do to prove to your ass? And as they're talking, we see somebody across the street staring at them. So Stern and Mrs. Stern are in the, uh, their divorce hearing or whatever with their lawyers. And Stern ain't trying to give her shit. He ain't trying to give her none of the house, none of the cause. He want that bitch to leave with her on her back. And so this bitch is like, you got life fucked up. I am a real housewife of New York. You think I ain't about to leave with some coins? You got life fucked up. You think I was over here staying with your little gay ass, with your swing ass all these years and I gonna get nothing out of this deal? You got life fucked up. So her lawyer get to pulling out all these goddamn accounting books and they point out the fact this nigga been embezzling money and using their daughter name to embezzle money into this fake ass business. So Stern looking like, oh, you motherfuckers have tried it. So the wife get everything she want. She get the clubs and everything else. And uh, so Stern comes out the room and he sees Ghost standing there. He was like, oh, you think you won, didn't you? You think you won, nigga. But you're going to see me again one day. You think she's going to be a good boss? She's a worse boss than me. Mrs. Stern comes out and she was like, hey, girl. Pretty good paperwork. Go ahead and sign your name on it because I'm going to sign the club over to you. And so Stern is like, oh, so you think that you you, you the one this shit because you got your little punk ass club back. And so Ghost informs him that no, nigga, I ain't just get the uh, club back. I got the Miami club and a whole nother club. Ha <laughs> ha, nigga, I the one one. And so Angela ass is outside running in the cold. And I just wish this bitch get frostbite or run over by a car or fall down a drain or whoo. And so, ghost bitch ass is all across the street, Angela, Angela, let me talk to you, Angela. And she running, ain't paying this nigga no attention, and she running to her building, and he goes to stop her, he's like, look, bitch, I got my clubs back, and me and you can be together, everything is all good. And so she says to him, are you fully clean? And he's like, no. Technically, no, but I will be. And she's like, look, let me tell you something. I ain't got time for this shit. I don't want to be with your ass. You out here selling your dope all around the tri-state area, motherfucker. Look, and she, she's like, I could have burned you yesterday, Jamie, but I thought about you losing your kids. I thought about you, so I didn't do it. I hurt someone else instead. He deserved better from me. I deserve better from you. I love how the writers try to throw in these little lines with her character acting like she give a fuck about this nigga kids. Like, you ain't even met his kids. You don't give a fuck about them kids. They don't even know you exist, bitch. They don't even like you and don't even know you yet. You don't give a fuck about this nigga kids because you gave a fuck about this nigga kids. You would've been fucking a wife who's married to his wife. Forget your life. And I can't wait till next season when she realized this motherfucker ain't gonna never divorce this bitch and that she just gonna be a goddamn sister wife. Like, girl, get your life. So, he says, but Angela, you still love me. <sighs> Why they still got this nigga being a punk pussy, Usher, Justin Bieber, ass nigga behind this bitch. You got it, you got it bad. When you're all alone, and you go right back. Oh, you. I don't know why the fuck they got this nigga pouting after this bitch like she is just made of fucking gold. They act like she Hillary Rodden Clinton up in this bitch. God damn, they act like this bitch is Jennifer Lopez. This bitch look like Maria Cachito Gonzalez. <laughs> like, this bitch ain't shit. Why they got this nigga going after this bitch so tough? Like, he's so in love with this bitch. After all the dirt that she did, I just don't understand what the, what the writers are thinking. I think that part of his character is so whack and played the fuck out. Like, this nigga needs to be on some bullshit. Like, I thought... Anywho, I digress. It ain't my goddamn show. So, she says, Jamie, my career is over because of you. Can you just leave me the fuck alone? <laughs> ghost and she gets on the elevator he's standing there he fixes his coat because his feelings is hurt <sighs> so 
So Tommy out in the park and he walking his dog. And he on the phone with Kane and he was like, I talked to Lobos. He wants the deal. Ghost doesn't suspect the thing. So the dog get a, a, out of the, the leash or whatever. He was like, yo, I got to call you back. So he running at the dog shit. The dog run up around the corner. And guess who the fuck the dog run to? Holly. And I was like, I told y'all Holly was coming back. But we'll get into all my I told you so's at the end of this episode. So he looking at this bitch like, where the fuck you come from, bitch? And he says, I'll give you a... I'll give you a head start because if I catch you, it ain't going to be good. And she like, go send me away. I can prove it. I love you. This thing setting you up. I didn't never want to leave you. He made me leave. And so Tommy say to her, you better stop your lying, gold digging, snitching ass off. Or I will choke your ass out in front of God and everybody. <laughs> like, this nigga is crazy. And I love it. That lie was everything. So she says, no, ask him. Ask Ghost about Monica Pop more. And she says, I love you, Tommy. She hands him a bag with all the money and the ID code. You see how I tell y'all that the writers can redeem a character because we hate Holly at first. And now Holly is proving herself to be loyal. The bitch didn't spend none of the money. She gave him the ID back. And she came the fuck back and risked her motherfucking life for this nigga. The same thing they can do to Tasha character is grow her character up and make this nigga realize that she's the bitch that he needs to be with. But I digress. I guess it's just my fantasy. Courtney Kemp got some other sick ass fantasy going on in her head. But anywho. So Dre fine ass is escorted into Ghost's office looking all good. I'm like, hey, routine me slash Drain, how you doing? I just hit the lotto. That's his song. Check it out if y'all ain't heard it. It's called Lotto featuring 50 Cent and it is this shit. is one of my favorite songs right about now. So Ghost steps up behind and says, welcome to truth. I didn't like that line at all. That was a whack ass line and even the way it was said was whack. You could tell the nigga did not want to say that shit. So he got his hands up and he said, I'm not here to kill you, man. Ghost walks in front of him. He said, it was you who got the girl in Miami first. And so Dre says, Kanan told me to kill her, but I ain't taking orders from him no more because he's fucked up in the head. Sean came to see you the other night. And after you sent him away, he came to the shack. Kanan shot him. He told me to dump the body so nobody could find it. And Ghost is like, not Sean. Well, no. What? No. Dre says to him, that was it for me, man. I'm a father. If he could do that to his own son, what you think he'll do to me? And so, Ghost yoke his ass up, hold the gun up to his face. And he said, you gonna work for me, huh? And Dre says, what, I gotta, what more I gotta do to prove it to you, man? And so, the shit go off. And so, Dre leaves the office and he gets in the car with Kanan. And we was like, Oh, okay, so this nigga playing both sides. Like, whose side is he really on? Kanan's or Ghost? Who is he really ride or die for? Rez is walking down this old wet ass corridor and he walking, and all of a sudden, Ghost ass appears out of nowhere. Like he Jesus or some shit. And so, Ruiz is shook, so he got his hand behind his back like, nigga, you try something, I'm going to shoot the shit out of you. And so, Ghost said, you heard about Tommy getting knocked, and Ruiz says, I heard he got out. And so Ghost tells him that Lobos is knocking off everybody and that he's seen Ruiz and Ghost's face. So at this point, they need to get the fuck out of Dodge and disappear. But they show Lobos in his cell and so he listens to some classical, classical music and shit and he's all on his Mozart shit. And then the knock comes that his food is being served. So he goes over to get his, his food and next thing you know, he gets grabbed. And get shanked in his motherfucking guts. It's like, uh, 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 uh. They just stuck his ass. And they flick a card on that nigga. And I'm like, God damn, they done got Lobos too. Like, what the fuck? Who is behind this shit? Angela asks is in court getting reprimanded about all the shiesty ass, sneaky ass, illegal ass shit that she did. But lo and behold, Isabel is nowhere to be found to testify against her ass. So Angela ass gets the fuck off. No justice for Angela. None. Kanan walks into an empty ass building, a vacating ass building, she with a whole bunch of wood and plaster and all this type of shit around. So he calling out for Tommy, like, Tommy. Hey, yo, Tommy. And so after that second, hey, yo, Tommy. <laughs> and ain't nobody answered. This nigga realized it's a motherfucking setup. So he goes 
to open the door and that motherfucker's locked. Next thing you know, ghosts come around the corner with the hammer on them. Kane said, shoot me on him like a little bitch. <laughs> Like this nigga steady talking shit, me about to die. That's a real G, cuz. West side, cuz. I'm from Bump, the nigga. Ghost pat him down. Check for a gun. And he finds one. He says, unarmed, huh? Okay. Lie to me, motherfucker. And so he said, this the same gun you used to kill your son? And Ghost, and Kaden says, he wasn't my son no more. He was your son. <laughs> this nigga don't give a fuck. So next thing you know, he. Smack the gun out of Ghost's hand, they get to fight, and it's like, oh, oh, you bitch, you, I eat you, bang, oh, and I'm like, oh, God. So at some point, Kanan grabs a wooden board and slaps the shit out of Ghost's ass with it, and this nigga's blinded for a minute, so... Kana runs off and ducks somewhere, and Ghost gets up, he picks up a wrench, and he's looking around, and he's leaning up against the wall, blood trickling outside his face, and Kana is standing behind him with the gun. And he said, like, put the fucking wrench down. I'm going to do you just like you did Roller, but you deserve it. And so, they get to fighting again, and get the better hand of this nigga, and he grabs a piece of plastic and wraps it over Ghost's face, and he just suffocates that nigga, and Ghost can't breathe, he's like, I thought about all these ways I can kill you over the last 10 years. And he was like, I was thinking about you uh, making you watch me while I fuck Tasha. Watching your brain sweater everywhere. Fucking you in the ass, then shooting you in the stomach. He's coming up with all these old sick ass scenarios to kill this nigga. And so as he's talking and giving his old eulogy and shit. <laughs> Ghost ass finds a piece of uh, glass, picks it up, and stabs this nigga in his motherfucking stomach. It was a lot of stabbing in the stomach. I wish they would have figured out another way. But he stabs this nigga in the stomach. Kane ass falls the fuck out. And his eyes close. And Ghost is like, that's what your problem is. You talk too much, motherfucker. So he gets the canteen. He douses this motherfucker with oil, with gas and shit, and sets that motherfucker on fire. And I was like, damn, homie. Last week you was the man, homie. So Tommy finds Ghost. At that little wash and fold. Ghost is sitting there having a drink because he beat up. He scarred and shit. And he got to have a drink. This nigga needs some bourbon. Some yak. Something up in this motherfucking system. So Tommy come in and says, oh, can and dead, huh? And so Ghost get up and was like, where the fuck were you at? I could I could have been killed. And so Tommy says, I was hanging out with her. And he pulled out the ID. And Ghost looked and he was like, you can't trust the dog. I'm trying to tell you. He was like, I can't trust you. You paid her to leave. And so Ghost said, she's trouble. He's like, just like Kanan was trouble back in the day, just like I was trouble when I didn't want to help you with kill, kill Lobos. And so, he gives this old speech about how his brother is gone and he's dead and how he can't trust this nigga no more. And that he's going to be the distributor for Lobos while Ghost continues to be a party planner <laughs> and plan parties. So, Ghost informs him, uh, boo boo, there ain't no business. And Tommy look at him like, what? What you say? And Ghost informs him that, um, yeah, there's no business because I killed everybody. So come to find out, this nigga was the one that was killing everybody killed. He uh, sent Ruiz away. He had Lobo shanked in jail. He killed Drifty. He killed Serbian. He was the one behind all this shit. Once again, he lied to Tommy and bamboos the fuck out of Tommy. And he had his own agenda, his own plan this whole motherfucking time. Because he was like, they know it. They... Everybody knew their faces, they knew their names, and they had turned on us. They had to motherfucking pay, and the only way out was to cut all ties. So Tommy realizes he has been tricked again, and he's pissed the fuck off. And I was pissed the fuck off, too, because I understand that Ghost wants out of the business. He wants to change his life over and be with this yellow-ass bitch. But at the same token, this supposed to be your best friend, and the backstory on him and Tommy character is when Ghost Mama died and his daddy was a fucking drunk, um, he went to move in with Tommy and his mother. They helped raise him. They helped, you know, give him shelter. So this man had been your friend for all these years and helped you out, let you live with him, and you steady lying to him and tricking him and making life choices for him, making life decisions for him. 
that's not right. Whatever you choose to do with your life is what you choose to do with your life. But let that man had con had to continue to sell drugs. That's what the fuck he want to do. You could have gave the business over to him, like Tommy said. Go ahead and party plan. I'll do this. Your ass is cut away from it. What was the problem? He just can't continue to make decisions for Tommy. That's not cool and continue to lie to this man. Y'all supposed to be business partner, but at the same token, it ain't no partnership here. You the one running everything. Only use me when you motherfucking need me. Other than that, I'm of no use for you. So I understood where Tommy's character was coming from because that's how he do everybody. He play Tommy ass out, play Tasha ass out. If you're of no use to him at that moment, he don't fuck with you. So Tommy pissed the fuck out. He pulled his gun out on uh, Ghost. And Ghost is like, yo, Tommy, don't do this. We got a business, a legit fucking business. And he said, that's your business. This is my business. It's the only thing I'm ever good at. And Ghost says, no, fuck that. You're great at it. But I got more to offer. And you do got more to offer, my nigga. But let that man go and fuck up his life. That's what the fuck he choose to do. Go Tommy says to him, no matter how much your suit costs, I know how many clubs you own. You ain't nothing but a ghetto ass corner boy with a drunk for a daddy and no mama. You ain't changed at all. So go ahead and do it. And so that nigga get all up in his feelings like, nigga, you talking to my mama? You talk and he pull his gun out on that nigga too. So they holding guns next to each other's face. And the next thing you know, here come Dre behind Tommy holding the gun to Tommy head. And Tommy like, oh, word. So this your new lap dog? This your new partner? You just got rid of me that motherfucking fast nigga? Uh, okay. So he tells Dre, you know what? Watch your motherfucking back because this nigga right here ain't no good. He was like, I see you around, ghost. And he walked the fuck out. And that scene right there just hurt my motherfucking heart because I just felt, I, I, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm team Tommy on this one because I just felt like he played him. Like, you did everything you wanted to to make sure that you was straight. Make sure you got everything that you wanted. But everybody else is to be damned. Fuck Tasha, fuck Tommy, the motherfuckers that came up with your ass. The motherfuckers that was loyal to your ass to a fault. To a fault. When this bitch over there was willing to sell your ass to the motherfucking feds to cover her ass and her job. I, just, I don't know what the fuck the, read, the writers are doing with this nigga character. But I hate him now. I fucking hate this nigga. I'm all team Tommy, team Tasha with this shit. Fuck Ghost and that bitch. So, Angela goes to see Ghost. And she says, what the hell happened to you, Jamie? <laughs> and he's like, I was your here. And like, I ain't got time for all that extra shit tonight. And so she tells him that Isabella didn't show up. But I'm pretty sure you knew that. And then Lobo said the kid is dead. But I'm pretty sure you knew that too. I just want to know, how the fuck did you come out of this clean, Jamie? How the fuck are you still alive or everybody else is dead? And so, he won't answer her. As always, because all them niggas, if it ain't a lie coming out of neither one of their mouths, they don't have a conversation. So, she says, I can't be with Ghost, Jamie. I need to be with Jamie. I can't be with Ghost. And so, he tells her that Ghost is dead, but James St. Patrick isn't. And then he got everything he wanted. He got the clubs. He out the motherfucking dope business. He got his kids. He ain't fucking with Tasha no more. They can finally be together. She got her job. Everything is A-OK. -okay. And so she says, if from this point forward you can promise to be everything you say you can be, I can't promise to forget everything, but I can try. And they kiss. And we all know that shit ain't gonna last. Then they gonna be right back in the dope biz season three. So next thing we see is Tasha and Keisha on the bed. And they, they rap with each other. And Tasha tells Keisha that she can't believe that Shine just left without saying anything. And so Keisha says, well, maybe he decided he wasn't ready to be a daddy to three kids. I mean, I can understand why he wouldn't want to say goodbye, bitch. Ain't nobody trying to be your motherfucking surrogate ass daddy. No, and that's the reason. Like, she got a whole attitude because nobody want to deal with her and her baby kids. So, Tasha gets a phone call and she's like, yes, this is Miss St. Patrick. Uh-huh. Uh, all right. And the next thing you know, we see them down at the mortuary and they got the ID the damn body. And sure enough, it's Shine, and they see the old big ass bullet wound in his head, and it's like R.I.P. Shine, pull out some for my nigga. And so Keisha ass is crying because she remember that little good black chocolate ass dick she got, and Tasha's feeling some type of way she won't revenge. You can see it all over her face. So then we switch to Ghost and Angie. Them motherfuckers on cloud nine. They think they the beavers and shit. And so they kiss each other goodbye, and we tell each other have a good day, and they see each other later on that night. So, somebody is watching him from across the street. So, Ghost leaves out and going on about his day. And Angela goes down to the trash chute. So, when she's going to get back on the elevator, the elevator door opened up. And guess who's standing there? Greg, crazy ass. Greg is standing there all disheveled. Like, he's been drinking and thinking. 
<laughs> listening to some god motherfucking Al Green and in his motherfucking feelings. And so she says, you're only suspended. If I call 911 now, you'll be arrested and fired. This is one condescending ass bitch. Why the fuck didn't the writers have this bitch at least get shot in the pinky toe, in her left thumb, in her shoulder blade, in her ear, in her bottom lip, something. Let her heart get shot, something. How the fuck you gonna tell this man you're only suspended? <laughs> this bitch got balls. This much, cause they are doing a great motherfucking job to basically tell her that I know who ghost is, bitch, and I know you fucking this nigga, and I know you helping this nigga, and I'm guaranteeing your ass that you gonna go the fuck down, and so is this nigga, and I'm coming for your asses, and I hope and pray to God season three that they had this nigga come gunning after hers, gunning after her ass 100 miles and running. Like, I hate this bitch, and I hate the way this fucking episode ended, because this bitch still gets away with everything. Her and Jamie get away with everything. Ugh, so, they switch back to Tasha, and she at the mortuary or whatever. Blaming herself for Sean's death. And Keisha tells her that it, it, she didn't. She wasn't the one to pull the trigger. And she was like, but I know who did. We see Mike go to see Lobos in the infirmary. Or whatever the fuck it's called. And um, he hands him his phone. He calls him Hefe. And I was like, boop, told you. Mike was his little birdie. Another right for me. So then we see Ghost coming home to Angie. She laying in the bed. She's like, hi, baby. How you doing? And he was like, hey, how you doing? And they get in the bed with each other. And they ask each other if they're okay. And they both lying to one another still. <sighs> then at the very last scene, the police are at the site of the fire. And they're questioning why would somebody break into a building to set a fire. And then they go up to the door. And the cop says, nah, someone broke the fuck out. And we realize Cain ain't dead. That nigga is burned alive. <laughs> this nigga is somewhere roaming the streets of New York looking crispy than a motherfucker. So, on my Power Season 2 recap video that I posted Thursday, if you haven't watched it, which is funny as fuck. I gave you all my predictions for the season finale. My predictions were Angela would turn on Ghost. I was wrong about that one. Greg would get his revenge on Angela. He didn't. He's still trying. I was wrong about that one. Drake would switch sides and join Ghost crew. I was right about that one. Lobos goes on a killing spree to ensure his freedom. I was wrong about that one. It was Ghost. Michael will be revealed as Lobos Birdie. I was right about that. And Tasha will either try to get Angela killed or get revenge on Ghost for assuming he killed Sean. I'm right about the revenge part on Ghost because I think she's going to think that he was the one that killed Sean. So, watching the season finale, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I got my life. But it was a lot about it that I was pissed off about. I hate the fact that these writers still got this nigga just being soft behind this bitch. Just being dumb beyond belief. Because I'm just sorry in real life that would never go down that way with a dope nigga. Not dope dealer. Not none of dope dealer niggas that I grew up with that I know. Other dope dealer characters we've seen in movies. Like nobody in the history of life has ever been this sprung behind a bitch that ain't loyal. That's a liar. That's a skank. That's a heathen. Like, nobody has been this blindly dumb behind pussy that's a dope dealer. Like, what the fuck? And that just forsakes motherfuckers that have been loyal to him for years for a motherfucker that just came back into his life six months ago. I just don't get that part of the show. I don't, I don't even know. At this point, I want Kanan to shoot this nigga. Just kill both of them bitches. I want Kanan, Tasha, and Tommy to team the fuck up and kill Ghost and Angie at this point. Fuck them niggas. I don't like neither one of them. I'm team Tasha, team Holly, team Tommy. I'm team them motherfuckers. Everybody join the fuck up and kill them niggas because I don't like Ghost no more. I hate his character. I don't like the way he did Tommy. I don't like the way he did Tasha. He all for himself. He don't give a fuck about nobody. Him and that bitch over there don't give a fuck about him. He don't give a fuck about his kids. I want to see next season. They're going to be playing house. 
Bring them damn kids over there to the house and let's see how well this relationship lasts. Let's see how the relationship lasts and them kids gotta come over there and spend a night and they giving this bitch a side eye and telling her, you ain't none of my mama, bitch. And she got to be at home on the weekend watching yes and shit. And while this nigga out of the club and leaving her ass in the house with his damn kids. Let's see how this shit roll when you gotta play stepmama to a bunch of kids that don't like your ass. Let's see how this shit work out when her and Tasha finally do come face to face because that bitch still all the ass whooping. Whew. Oh, and I left out the part where uh, Tommy gets the phone call from Lobos and uh, Lobos basically tells Tommy that he has to kill Ghost in order to ensure his trust to become the New York distributor and that if he don't kill Ghost, then he's going to kill him and Ghost and Holly. So, I don't give a fuck no more. I'm with whoever got underneath the comment section last week on the uh, season nine, I mean it's episode nine uh, video and said that this gotta be some old sick fascination fantasy that Courtney is playing out on camera for some shit that's going on in her life. This whole Angela, Tommy, I mean ghost thing. Cause this shit is just, it's unrealistic at this point. It's so unrealistic. It's just so unrealistic. Like. And I, I know y'all be wondering, like, why I be feeling so deeply about it. Because I'm an author. If you don't know what I do for a living, I'm a motherfucking author. I'm a national best-selling author. I've sold hundreds and hundreds of thousands of books over the, my career. Google me if you don't know who the fuck I am. Keisha Irvin. This is what I do for a fucking living. And so from a writer standpoint, I just don't understand. I don't get it. But I don't, I don't understand it. But I give the season finale. Me taking my feelings out of it. I guess a nine. But I can't take my feelings out of it because I'm just hurt behind everything. I'm just, I gotta go to bed. After watching that and seeing Straight Outta Compton, I don't know what I need to do with my life. <laughs> like, I just need to rethink some shit. So, I'll see y'all next year, June, for season three. They better change a lot of shit season three or my ass is gonna be done with this fucking show. See y'all in September, September 23rd, I believe, for the Empire season two. Premiere, I'll be doing uh, reviews on uh, Empire. So, love you all. Thank you for watching every video every week. The comments, the views have been phenomenal. I love you all.